Hello everybody, and Hi. welcome to another Battleground Games Live. Hi there everybody. Andy, I'm Andrew. Yep. It is already staticky. Oh, okay. I can take care of that. Hello everybody, and welcome to Battleground Games Live. How's it going out there? Much uh, better. Awesome. You have the chat up on your screen, right? I do. Awesome. Hey, I'm Andrew, Whoa. and I'm tripping over stuff. You okay? Tripping, and Amanda is with me, Hi. and we are going to stream the Labyrinth board game. This is Jim Henson's Labyrinth, the board game. And uh, we had, we ran a poll last week, uh, basically from Saturday to Wednesday or Thursday, uh, to find out what game you, the viewers, wanted to see. And this game won handily, which yeah. was nice. Which is um, cool. I've been looking forward to doing this, so. Yeah. I was a little reluctant <laughs> myself to put it on. Did somebody just stick I just their head saw in? A, a David Ruschinski head. Oh, okay. Pop up behind you. I saw it on screen before I saw he was actually there. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I was reluctant to do Labyrinth because it is so hard to get a hold of yeah and I kind of want to feature games that people can grab and you know take home and play but this is a game that Amanda has spent so much time um, working on just she's been doing the the figures painting the figures for the yeah. game um, which I will show off in a moment yeah and so we wanted to play we've played once before and it was our uh, our discovery from playing that was that it is much harder than it needs to be. Um, it's a primarily luck-based game. Yeah. It's a lot of dice rolling and the luck of what's in the cards. And we did not do well on our first playthrough with a couple of <laughs> friends. Uh, Sarah was unsuccessful in rescuing her brother. So, Amanda, do you want to like describe the game and introduce sure. the, or show the characters and stuff yeah so i have loved the movie labyrinth for a very long time so when when the board game came As out I, um it's definitely up there one of my favorites i, I would have gotten it for myself right away except andy bought it for me for christmas uh leading to a moment where we thought we had managed he thought we had managed to buy the same game for each other, but I had bought him Captain Sonar. Which but is awesome. That meant that we had two boxes cool. roughly the same size sitting under our tree. So, yeah, but I was, I was pretty certain he had not bought me Captain Sonar. <laughs> so, yeah. um, but when I opened it, the figures were unpainted. They were, they were just that gray plastic. So I thought, well, I need these painted. I need these to look like the art on the cards. So each of the characters comes with these uh, cards. I'm trying to. Yeah, there we go. Uh, they come with these really nicely illustrated cards that show you a picture of the character and their sort of stats. And we'll get into the stats in a little bit, but basically their stats are what die they use to roll when they're challenged with a certain stat. So wit, speed, brawn. So obviously Ludo is very strong, um, but he's not super witty. And he's, he's okay speed-wise because he's got, you know, a big stride. Whereas Hoggle is so slow. Yes, Hoggle is the slowest. Um, but he is pretty witty. So yeah, and you have willpower, which is sort of your health. But these cards were really gorgeous, so I decided to use them as an inspiration for painting the figures. So we have Ludo. Smell bad. So I painted Ludo. He was the first one I painted. Really spectacular, dark. gorgeous um, shading. I'm really proud of him. He came out a lot better than I had any right to expect. Um, so yeah, I'm pretty happy with, with his paint job. Um, and he starts up here in this corner. Yep. And then we have, actually I'll do Hoggle next. Okay. Do you want the card? Yeah. So next we have Hoggle. 
No, oh, it's Hoggle. Hoggle. There's Hoggle. Now, you can't see the back of the figure, obviously, on the card. So I had to look him up. Um, because the back of his vest, you can see it, has a face on it. And I knew that. I had seen it in the movie before. But it's got this little face with a tongue coming out right here. It turns out that tongue is part of the bandolier across his chest that's holding all his little pouches and knickknacks and stuff, which I think is really cool. You can't see it very well on this small figure, but they're coming out with uh, much larger figures based on the same sculpts that I will be getting and I will be painting. Um, so there's Hoggle, and I did the bases to match their cards. So Hoggle's card is like a red and a burgundy. So his base is a red and burgundy, and Ludo is a brown and a tan. So next we have Sarah. So here's Sarah. You can see she's wearing uh, jeans and her shirt and vest. When I was a kid, I wanted nothing more than to dress just like Sarah. Um, I'm sure you could but, accomplish that. Hmm? You could accomplish that. I could, but I'm not tall. Yeah. I'm five foot four. So, yeah. Um, so here's Sarah. I'm pretty pleased with her. Um, what I'm most pleased with, aside from the weathering on her jeans, which is some really, really, really fine highlighting, is the work on her vest. I don't know if you can see it very well on the camera, but her vest in the movie is a tapestry. Uh, it's like a, you know, um, brocade sort of look to it. And it's all embroidered with gold thread. So doing that on her vest was very, very hard. But I got her done. I had to buy a whole new color of paint to get that bright blue base. Though I suppose I put, could have just used my nail polish. Matches your nails. I know. So she starts down here in the oubliette. Yes. Um, and then we have Didymus. Oh my goodness, this figure. So, so much detail. Didymus, before I show you Didymus, I'll show you the card. Sure. And when you look at the card, you're like, oh yeah, there's detail work in the blanket, in the saddle blanket um, under his saddle on Ambrosius, his mount, his dog. Um, and you're like, oh yeah, there's detail work. Yeah, there's heraldry. And it's there is official heraldry. And I looked it up. Some very nice person on DeviantArt uh, did like a study of the puppets at one point and drew out all of the heraldry that's on the blanket. And, it's and so I did it with a very tiny brush and a lot of patience. And then I did it again because I messed it up. I have so such respect <laughs> for your skill. I don't have those kinds of skills. That's Didymus. And here's Didymus's card. And then the last one doesn't have a card to go with it because the last one is Jareth. So Jareth, these four characters out here are the characters that you're going to play with. And you can play uh, two player, three player, four player. You're always going to play with Sarah and Hoggle. Yep. And then you add in Ludo if you play three player and Didymus if you're playing four player. Andy and I are going to play two player. But we're, but we're gonna each going to take two four. characters yeah. so that we're going to play with all four so you can see how all four of them work together. So Jareth, as you can see, um, has his cloak. I looked it up. It is shimmery and blue in the movie. Um, and he's got his shiny leather vest. I managed to get uh, the globe in his hand to be a little iridescent by mixing different silver paints together. And I had to look up the cloak that he's wearing, but it has this really cool like rib cagey thing on the back of it and on the shoulders so I was able to hit that with some metallic uh, highlighting the cloak was a lot of fun actually getting all those shadows and stuff in there it's meant to be like a midnighty sort of color and of course he is purple because the cards in the deck have those two shades of purple is that how you decided that okay, yes that's cool. it is indeed how I decided I didn't that, know that. So Jareth starts in the middle of the labyrinth. But um, he'll move around. And, but he'll move around. So I've described this game to people as sort of talisman light in a way. Um, in talisman, you have a board that has empty spaces all the way around, rings the board. And as you move around it, you 
reveal cards and you encounter them in an empty space. This is a similar idea where you move around the board onto these empty spaces and every time you move onto an empty space you reveal a card from the event deck and you encounter it. Now it may be a creature in the labyrinth, it may be an event that happens, it may be an object. Um, the peach that Jareth gives Hoggle to give to Sarah is in it's there. It's nasty, yeah. Um, yeah, it's a really unpleasant card. So all those different things, and they're all very themed to the movie, you can encounter them in that deck. Some of them go away after you've encountered them, some of them don't. Uh, some of them stay right where they are and you encounter them if you land on that space again. But like Talisman, if you've played that, you can go in either direction. You can like start going this way and then decide, nope, I'm going to go this way on your next turn. Um, I'm getting static. Oh, I'll take care Sorry of that. Sorry to say. Mm -hmm. um, now the thing is that differentiates pause, pause for this. A second. Yep. Yeah. The thing that differentiates this from like Talisman, for example, is that Talisman can go on for hours and 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 hours. Yeah, and I, hours. I don't know if I've ever completed and a game hours. with Talisman. Yeah. Um, whereas this game has a timer. It has yeah. a limited number of rounds. And when you have reached the 13th round, if you have not won, before it ticks around back to one, you lose. The game wins. Jareth wins the game. Yep. And you, as and a group of players, to play cooperatively, lose. Um, but you can't even jump to the end game because the beginning of the end game is buried in the deck. Which brings me to house rules. Yep. Um, Andy and I are using three house rules tonight based on our first playing of the game. The first time we played the game, um, we realized it was very hard to team up, and that's supposed to be part of the whole point of the game, is that you're teaming up and gathering your team together so that you can go face Jareth and take him down. Um, you have to land exactly on your teammates. That's hard. Yeah, what we ended up have doing... A tip. Yeah, there is a way to, to get around if, it. Yeah, if you want to stick with that rule where you have to land on, Exactly. Um, what we found is that if you end up getting sent to the oubliette in the bottom corner here, you get to wait there. Well, you, you can rest anywhere. Yeah, you can rest but anywhere. But there's multiple ways to get to the oubliette. The so it's you a can good get place sent to, to the oubliette meet. pretty easily, and then you know you're getting sent to the same space, and then you can team up in there. But that's kind of the, a waste of a round because then. You're just sort of sitting there waiting for another player to get sent to the oubliette so that you can team up and then leave the oubliette and keep playing. Um, so we're going to house rule it that we can stop on somebody else to team up with them. Yeah, you forfeit the rest of your movement. So if you rolled an eight and they're three spaces away from you, that's it. You stop where they are. You can't pick them up and go with them, but you get to stop. Forfeit your move. You stop on the, the, your, your new teammate. Um, once you're teamed up, you move at the speed of the slowest character, because they have yep. different speeds. But, um, yeah, you also get to then encounter things together, and this brings me, me to the second house rule. In the rules, it says that when you are teamed up with two characters or more, you can roll any dice for the characters in your group. So if you had Ludo and Hoggle together, and they yep. had a wit check, you Ludo would roll... Way. Well, you can roll both. Yeah, you can roll both. Ludo Ludo rolls a roll d6 both. for his wit, and Hoggle rolls a d12 for his wit. And then you can pick the better roll. So you're rolling with advantage yeah. for that. Now, that's all well and good, but except Jareth rolls a d20 Yeah. every time. And the very best you can hope for there is to have a 12 wit and roll a 10, a, a 10 11, or 12 to get... Yeah. up there because half of Jarrett's rolls are going to be more, a le little less than half, are going to be above what you can even roll, let yeah. alone what you're likely to roll. It's, it's not fair. It's not fair. Um, but what we decided was that it, because you end up wasting so many turns trying to, like, I got stuck on a single space with Jarrett and had to keep battling him, what, like three, four times? Yeah. 
and you end up wasting rounds, and it's hard enough to get to the end game. Way. It was like we we yeah. only got barely to the end game before we ran out of rounds. So we're gonna try tonight instead of rolling with advantage, adding the dice. Which um, would probably make it far too easy, but yeah. that's okay for a stream. That's fine. It doesn't matter. Um, we'll uh, see if we can figure out a better way to do it. The third house rule has to do with when the end game happens. Right. So in the instructions, it tells you to take a card. There's a card that is the gates to the Goblin City. And you're supposed to take your deck, divide it into thirds. It's 30 cards. Divide it into thirds. And then shuffle the gates to the Goblin City into the bottom third of the deck. So it could be it the could last be card the in last the deck. Card, which means you're going to have to churn through this. To get through and it in hard. 12 turns. Um, like, I, I think we were almost out of the deck. I think it had yeah. to have been right at the bottom of that deck. So what we did tonight was we divided it into quarters. I shuffled it into the like bottom third quarter. And then we shuffled the rest of the deck sort of around that quarter and, and stuck it together. As you encounter cards, if they yep. don't stay on the board um, or go like to hang out with you, they go on the bottom. They go the on the bottom of the stack, so yep. you can't tell how far down the deck you've gotten. Unless you've been counting cards. Yeah, unless you've been counting. Uh, but yeah, a couple other things to talk about. I'm gonna put. But those the are our clock. house rules. Those are the things that we've decided to do a little bit differently, and that's based on. Um, the things that we've done. I don't know uh, if you guys can see that. I'm going to put the clock in the middle of the map here. Which I'll turn it around so it's upside it's covering up. the goblin spaces. We'll have to well, move it. Well, we'll move it when we get to the center of the city, so but the this will give you the folks who yeah. are watching an idea of what turn we're on. The idea um, is that you move around, you're stuck in the labyrinth, you're lost, you're encountering things, you're getting challenged by Jareth, um, you're meeting up with friends, and then when you meet up with friends, you're going off together to um, try and find your way to the center of the labyrinth. And eventually, you will find your way to the center of the labyrinth, where you will start to encounter the goblins. Um, may I see the, the big guy? Yeah. This is the first one you encounter. Obviously, the gate itself, the big mech suit in the gate. Um, so he shows up right here. And the other goblins show up on the other spaces. And the end game is that you are going to have to defeat all four of them. And then Jareth. And the person playing Sarah has to recite the through hardships unknown. And yeah, you have to recite the poem theoretically from the memory. <laughs> uh, there's a cheat card. Yeah, there's a card. We'll <laughs> use that. We probably will. Through dangers unknown and hardships unnumbered, I have fought my way here to the Goblin City uh, to take back the child which you have stolen. Yes. And then for my kingdom is, is something. For in my, my something, my kingdom is great. You have my no will is as strong as yours, me. and my kingdom is great. Yeah. I think so. Yeah, I think I got it. So very much, much this though. game is for fans of the movie. Oh yeah. Every card is a scene from the movie, like the poem that you have to recite at the yeah. end is from the movie. You are going to be quoting the movie. You'll hear us quote the movie throughout this. So if you're not familiar with the movie Labyrinth, this game, most of the appeal of it probably will escape you. Yeah. I'm just um, sending out a thing saying that we're, we're streaming. Cool. Um, and I, I love the movie, so I was super happy to get this. Um, there is an expansion coming out. There's a Goblins expansion that has a bunch of goblin figures that can be added to I the board to run around that. and yeah. be more challenging. I kind of feel like with our house rules, we may have made things a little too easy, but I don't know how else to alter things in a way to compensate for sort of the things that didn't work very well in the original game um, without nerfing it too much. Um, but maybe the goblins will add enough challenge to balance that out without swinging too far the other way. Um, so I've got Sarah and I've got Ludo. Yep. And each character comes with two cards. They come with a special ability card that you get. They also come with a weakness card. Um, it is recommended in the instructions that the first couple of times that you play, you play with the special ability, but not the weakness. So we're going to do that. Um, Sarah's special ability is uh, not fair. No. It isn't. 
but that's the way it is. Who's Dee Dell? Hello. Hi. How are you doing? Welcome. Welcome. Um, once per game, you can discard this card to roll an extra blue die for a failed wit test. Wow. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, Once my friend, game. my actual friend Sarah was playing Sarah the last time, so I didn't really look at her card. Um, without losing a willpower token, when you re-roll it, you can try to re-roll a die for a challenge, um, and uh, yeah, you lose a willpower for that. Yeah. Like I said, that's your which help. is not a big issue for Sarah to start out with because no, she's she got starts five out with will, but. Hoggle does not have a lot of willpower, so he starts with three will. Yeah, he's, you know, he's kind of weak. It's okay. Um, we're doing well. We're hoping to play Labyrinth and have some fun, so thank yeah. you for tuning in. Sorry you're not doing well. But no, you're doing well. Oh, they okay. Say, they I'm are well. well. Okay. I'm well. We're See, happy. I, I can't read. I'm tired. It's okay. Well, you're, you're looking at it on your phone, so it's yeah. tiny. Um, Ludo's special ability. Oh, did you tell them what her weakness oh, is? Oh, no, I didn't because I'm We're not, not using playing it. with the weaknesses. <laughs> so, this game is hard enough with the basic rules oh, in God, our yeah. estimation. It can be even harder. Yeah. And her, her weakness <laughs> is it's not fair, right? Yeah, it's not fair. Uh, use a yellow die for your wit until you win a wit test. Sarah's wit is normally a d10. So you'd be using a D8 instead. Ouch. Uh, when you win your first wit test, discard this card and use your normal wit. So okay. I'm not going to so use that. So that makes it more of a challenge. Yeah, we've played it once before. Yeah. Um, and we enjoyed it. We're going to use a couple of house rules yep. um, for it tonight. Just to, to make, it, make sure we win. Adjust We're for some things. We're definitely going to beat Jareth this time. Um, we, had, we found it was very hard to team up, so we've got a house rule for that. And we found that the rolling with advantage um, did not help nearly as much as you want it to, having gone to the trouble of teaming up. Of course, so. if we had thought further ahead and rested more and Maybe. bulked up on will... But we would have been using up our, our rounds. Yeah, we would have run out of time. It's a, it's it's a, a game challenge. with a timer, so yeah. yeah. So we're going to... Yeah. Get so going. Just dive um, right in. Do you want to go over Hoggle and Didymus's oh, sure. weaknesses so and did you whatnot? Do Ludo's advantage oh, no, I and didn't. weakness? Ludo's uh, special ability is Rock's Friends. Rock's um, Friends. And once per game, you can discard this card to roll an extra blue die for a failed brawn test. Nice. Uh, without losing a willpower token. And his weakness is Ludo scared. Uh, use a purple die for your brawn, so that is a d10 instead of a d12 until you win your first brawn test. So I would think all of these are yeah, probably the along those are probably lines. Yeah, the probably all the same. Yeah. So Hoggle uh, has unexpected bravery. I played Hoggle in my first game. That's his special Fine. ability. Keep this card on your character sheet, blah, blah, blah. Once per game, you can discard this card and roll an extra blue die for a failed brawn or wit test without losing a willpower token. Nice. Um, and then you discard the card. Uh, DG Dell, did you did you tune in in time to see the figures that I had painted? Would you like to see them? Yeah, we can show them to you again on, on the document camera. Uh, Hoggle's disadvantage, uh, which we're not using, is Hoggle is Hoggle's friend. <laughs> uh, Keep this card on your character sheet. Use a purple die for your wit until you win a wit test. When you win your first wit test, discard this card and use your normal wit. So there's my Ludo. Yeah, so the, the figures come unpainted in this yeah. set. Oh, well, you've played the game, so you know. Yeah, so there's Ludo. So Amanda has done a spectacular job painting them up. Um, you want to do Sarah? Sarah. Here's Sarah. I love your Hoggle. Hoggle was so much fun. I'm really, really excited about painting a much larger Hoggle figure. Yeah, we're looking Thank forward you. to the bigger figures. Um, I, when I get the bigger figures, Hoggle, I looked up the sculpt that it was based on, and the Hoggle sculpt is so detailed. There's so much. You'll have much. to do all the things he's got in his bandolier, all those little pouches. Oh, I'm so looking forward to that. Yeah. Yeah. I'll be able to get so much more detail into like the face on his vest. Plastic. Plastic. Here's Sir Didymus and Bedivere. And uh, Ambrosius. Ambrosius, sorry. Uh, 
I'll be able to do Ambrosius's blanket without yeah like making my eyes cross yeah. I, I've been painting for the Battleground Games miniature competition and it just shows me how much I have yet to learn to look at these figures and just the amount of detail you got into them and I'm like oh man I feel bad but you know it's a learning thing you have to keep practicing thank you very much DG Dell I I had a lot of fun painting them they were um, really fun figures to play around with there was a lot of little detail but yeah, also a lot of surface sculpts. to to play with yeah they're they're really good sculpts um, so yeah I had a lot of fun with them like I said the larger figures they're putting out was it three inch figures yeah I three think. inch figures yeah they're putting out some three inch ver versions of them and uh, Matt here at the store uh, sent me a message on Facebook being like hey guess what three inch figures for labyrinth and I was like I need them I will get those. He's like, I was joking. You just finished painting the All other right. ones. All right, we didn't do Sir Didymus. That's the oh. last of them. Yep, Sir Didymus. So Sir Didymus, uh, that's his weakness. His advantage is charge. Uh, once per game, you can discard this card to roll an extra blue die for a failed brawn test. Uh huh. Okay. Um, and. His weakness, which we're not using, is Ambrosius, you're going the wrong way. The battle's <laughs> behind us. Uh, and it's, you use a yellow die for, uh, die for brawn. So you're using you like the two test. lower. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, DG Dell, if you see me in the chat, just so that you know, I may respond to things in the chat if it's easier for me to type it out while we're playing. Um, I'm Merriman Lion, I'm the chat mod as well. So I may respond to things in there, um, but are you near uh, like any of the battleground stores? Because I really like painting these. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I might be willing to paint. Oh others. boy, you, you you already have other figures you I, have to paint. Uh, I I can't live on talisman alone. <laughs> you were gonna paint Sarah's. Uh, That's Sarah's right. Figures. I'm gonna paint Sarah's. Um, Shadows over Camelot figures. Yeah. Anywho. Anyway. I think let's start the game. Uh, we're in Massachusetts. We are in the Boston area. The one that we're in is in Abington, Massachusetts. Yeah, there's three battleground locations. I think there's a link underneath here. Yeah, you can I see think it's down it under the video. Games, and that um, has all the information. There are two other games. stores. There's one north of Boston in Saugus and one uh, further south in Norton. All right, so uh, the Look game starts with Hoggle. Yep. Every turn, you may either rest, in which case you stay where you are, and roll a d6, I think it is, to find out if you're going to gain some wi uh, some willpower, which might be the right move for Hoggle. Really having a, a big bank of will is useful. Um, or you can move, in which case you roll uh, whatever your movement dial uh die is. In the case of Hoggle, it's, he's slow, so it's a d6. Uh, yeah, you roll a d6 and on a 4 or higher, so 4, 5, or 6, yeah. you gain a will. I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to stay where I am, Okay. not encounter anything, and try and gain some will. Yeah, so we have the dice in the our little yep. dice tray so you here. Can watch the die rolls. 4, I gain a will. Nice. Hoggle is... Still low on will, but a little bit better. Okay. And then it's Sir Didymus' turn. And Sir Didymus will move. Uh, he starts with four will, so he's fairly good. He rolls a black die that's a d12 yep. to move. Because Ambrosius is fast. So, nine. nine. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Or one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We could come over here and stop. With right, we're saying that we could stop yeah. and, and group up that quickly. Um, yeah, I, I'll go ahead and meet up with Ludo. And um, then 
We try to stream every Friday night around yeah, this time. Yeah, at about 7.30. Yeah. Uh, uh, sometimes it's some a little bit later game. if we're waiting for someone who's going to be coming and playing with us and they're stuck in traffic after work. But it's usually around this time. Um, we're playing uh, Labyrinth tonight, and we had put up a poll on our Facebook page asking what people wanted to see. And Labyrinth won by a fair margin. Yeah, but, people um, wanted to see Labyrinth, I guess. Dice Forge which is cool. was another uh, possibility. Yep. And uh, near and Far, I really want to play. Near and Far. King Domino is in the store now. I yeah. really want to play so many board games. I'm excited I want to about play. that. Um, and uh, we did put Colt Express in there. It didn't win, but I would love to play Colt Express on stream. It's such a fun game. Uh, Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, Friday nights are D&D &D nights that for a lot of people. Oh, yeah. Um, we'll probably try and do other streams as well. Right now, Friday night is a night that we can both reliably be in the store. Andy works for the store, um, and I don't. <laughs> so I have to get here from yeah. my actual job. But uh, we're going to try, try and do it on a, a different night as well. Um, so, yeah, thank you for following. And if you're followed, you'll hopefully see when we're online. And uh, we'll I do bonus streams around. during the week, uh, painting miniatures, yeah. building paint decks stuff. for magic, uh, various random stuff. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna try and work on uh, finding another time where we can reliably have some something going on. It may not be the two of us, it may be another uh, someone else. Yeah, Maybe we're gonna Andy have forty k games other. on the stream. Yep. There's there's many plans. Um, and we've had some people from the other stores interested uh, in doing cool. some streaming stuff too. Uh, it's a little trickier to get the streaming rig down to Norton or up to Saugus, but I think we can make it work. We'll find a we'll find a way to do it. Yeah. But that also means other times it might happen. So yeah, thank you very much. Um, so I landed here. Yep. I didn't really, I would have landed here, but right. we're house ruling it that I can stop on you. Yeah, so we're we doing it the game go forfeit easier. your move to meet and up. And something happens. Something oh, happens. Cool technology. Uh, this is the doors of the four guards. So this says, uh, test your wit versus one black die. Success, okay. leave this card on the space. Fail, lose a willpower and leave this card on the space. All right, so, so under normal circumstances, the card would roll a die mm -hmm. and then we would roll as a team, you would roll a green die and I would roll a black die. And we'd and roll we with advantage so we pick the higher yeah. roll. Um, but you we're gonna to try- add them on to each other? I think, okay, I, mean, I mean, do we want to do that or maybe just ourselves. wait until we hit Jareth to start doing okay. that? Okay, yeah. Yeah, let's do that. All right, so I think that'll keep it a rolling little more Rolling for inspired. the card first. Rolling for the card. That is five. a five. All right, I will roll a black die because, oh no, I'm not Hoggle. I'm Sir Didymus. Yeah, you're Didymus. I roll a yellow die for wit. I could roll a five or higher. That's I a rolled five. a five. And, and rolled a Luda rolled a three, but Luda's it's okay. Luda's not too smart. It's so, okay. Uh, it's I want to make sure on a tie that we win. I think we do. Uh, da, 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 first roll, and then... Roll the Wits Breeder Bond. If the good guys are equal or higher, the good guys win. So, Yay! we, we won. figured out the, the puzzle. Does it stay there or does it go away it if we defeat it? It stays there. Success, leave this card, okay. Yep. See, this is why I wanted to bury the gates not quite as far down. Yeah. Because there are a lot of cards that even if you win against them, they stay in those spaces. So there's a limited number yeah. of spaces that you can encounter things on. So uh, The yeah. Oubliette and the Bog of Eternal Stench ha -ha. have different rules. So We've we'll get to We've done something those. you had never seen before. Oh, cool. Yeah. Well, there you go. There's the ruling on it. <laughs> I'm getting smarter. <laughs> I never knew how to solve this one before. Okay, so right. now it is Ludo's turn, and um, we can travel together yes. if you would like. We can travel together. I you would like to travel with you. can invite us to travel together. Um, Your speed is a yellow die, right? Yes, my yeah. speed is a yellow die. So we're not moving quite as fast uh, as Didymus would travel on his own, but we are traveling faster than Hoggle yeah. at the moment. No, you didn't roll it on camera. Oh. I got the same thing, <laughs> so it's I a rolled five. a five. Okay. <laughs> um, so we're going to roll together. One, two, three, four, five. We can go that way. One, two, three, four, five. We can go that way. I want to go this way and Sarah. maybe try to yeah, hopefully meet up. Sarah. 
I mean, she should be able to roll a three. Two, three, four, five. And something happens. Something happens. So what has happened is Jareth appears. Oh no, Jareth. Ah, Prince of the Land of Stench. Oh no. Oh god. Test wit versus one blue die. Success, we get to discard this sucker. Fail, um, and we discard this card, but characters on this base are moved to the Bog of Eternal Stench. And then we have to encounter it. All yeah. right, we don't want to hit the Bog, so... No, we this don't. This is Jareth roll. This is wit. Is one blue. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, luckily... Oh, That's no. a ten. Oh, oh this What's is going to be wit? so hard. My wit is... Uh, an eight. A d12. No, oh, you're oh, Didymus. Oh, sorry, Didymus. And my wit is a six. Yeah, my wit is an eight. We cannot beat him. Well, well, oh, we're up against Jareth. Jareth, right. So, so we were, were going to team together. up. Okay. What? It's a six. All right, do you want to burn a willpower and re-roll? Yeah, I do. Or I think do we you... both have to burn a will. Or, yeah. Yeah. So we'll each re-roll. Or what's my roll? Four. Yeah, I'll re-roll as well. It's a seven. <laughs> yeah, we failed. Uh, we're going to the bog of eternal. We're going stench. to the bog of eternal stench. And the card stays there. Um, yeah, the cards. Uh, no, it doesn't actually. Um, you fail, you you discard it, and you just move to the bog of eternal stench. Uh. So let's go ships to the bottom. Um, in flames, we are. So this is a cooperative game. We play as a group against Jareth. Um, you know, because he's the Goblin King. Yep. And at the moment, he just beat us in our first, first encounter with him. Yeah, that was not a good start to the game. No, it's okay. Not great. It's okay. Not great. I do still stand by my house rule of instead of rolling with advantage, adding together the dice. Otherwise, it's almost impossible to beat Jareth in any encounter against him. All right. I mean, we lost, but we would have had no chance of winning. We must roll our speed die to avoid falling into the bog. Because okay. we're teamed, yeah. our speed is the lower speed, so we are moving as fast as... That's a d8. Okay. Uh, we want to roll... If you roll any result except for one or a two, you're safe. Hmm? Okay, so one or a two is bad. That's a three! Thank goodness. <laughs> we're not going to smell bad. Um, I'm starting to get some static hunter. Oh, okay. I'll reset the sound. Um, so those of you who are new to our stream, um, we do ever so often have uh, static and sound. So Andy yeah, it's disappointing. It's annoying. Uh, it's a problem with the USB inputs yeah. on the Mac. I think it's a problem with the USB that there's some sort of memory overflow. Yeah. And it it gets worse if we don't address it immediately. Which is why I am sitting here with one earbud in my ear and listening to the chat, which is kind of disorienting. But yeah, it is I'm so doing weird. it for you. <laughs> All right, it All is right. Uh, Sarah's move, right? Yes, it is Sarah's move. She's not meeting up with them now. <laughs> no. And so with Jareth on the board, if you can't land Amanda on that rolls space. a two, she must go this way because she yep. cannot land on the space with Jareth. So Sarah's speed is a d10. Okay, go ahead. It's a three. three. Well, you can go here. I can go past him. A one, two, I'm going to go here. towards Hoggle. Okay. And something happens? Something happens. A goblin! Whee. Okay. Uh, test brawn versus one red die. Versus one red. Well, That's I'll, fine. I'll roll the red. Yep, go for it. You must beat a... Oh, jeez. Slippery die. Deep wars, man. Three. All right. And Sarah rolls a d6 for brawn. Uh, no, that is definitely on our end, DG Dell. Um, we are... We, the laptop that we're using to film with, uh, the input on it has an issue where I've, it starts to get staticky. We're, I've tried we're hoping many to times to try and resolve it. Yeah. I've changed like the, the sampling rates. I don't know. I don't know what. We'll figure it is. out eventually. But for now, if I notice it, that's why I'm listening. Yeah. Uh, we'll I and try and tell him, and he resets it because he's it on up. the right side. That's a six. That you, you definitely won. So what happens when you win? Um, success. Discard this card. Right to the bottom it goes. Ship it. All right now. 
It's Hoggle's turn. Yep, and we move we it move up an hour. Bong to two o'clock. Yep. And Hoggle's going to move this time. His yes. speed is a green D6. Now Hoggle is the slowest character too. Okay, I'll move towards Sarah. Here you go. All right. And something happens. Yep. Uh, uh oh. Looks like I'm meeting with uh, piece of cake. Jareth again. And what happens? So Jareth Place goes Jareth on this space and test wit versus one blue die. Well, I'm witty. You are. So go ahead and roll the blue. Uh, success, discard, fail. Oh no, the cleaners! And then you have to do another challenge. Okay. It's a ten. Ten. Uh, I'm rolling a d12. You could do it. Uh, no. Six. Um, All right, so fail. Yeah. You test speed versus a yellow. No, I'm not speedy. It's not okay. against a, d a d20. It's a seven. Uh, I can't beat fail. a seven with a six. Yeah. Even um, if I fail. burn all my will. Yeah. Discard this card and lose two willpower. It's good that you bulked up your willpower yeah. prior to this. Bap, bap. I'm down to two willpower. And Sarah can't meet with me because she can't land on the space nope. with Jared. So that was bad. Yeah, Very that, bad. that stunk. So Didymus' turn. It's Didymus. And right. Ludo, traveling together. Will you travel yes. with me some more? I will travel with all you right. some more. Well, we'll do six. Uh, no, Ludo's not a six. Ludo is an eight. You're uh, remembering me as Hoggle. Oh, okay, okay. I'm sorry, you're right. Four. Four. Which way do you want to go? Uh, I'll no, go which this way, way do you want to go? One, two, three, four. Sure. Up or down? Here we go. And boom! The wise man and his hat. Yay! I love the, <laughs> the pictures. Everything is just so right in so the game. So stimulating being your hat. <laughs> Discard this card to roll an X. Keep this card on your character sheet. Nice. And it basically counts as, as an will. extra will. Yeah, nice. an extra will save. Well, it's, you can use it in blue. the little box. So you get to roll the d20 instead. It counts as like an extra special ability. Yeah. Nice. Cannot use it in the Goblin King's Castle Maze, so use it before the end game. Yeah. All well, right. when Gar Jareth shows up somewhere. Ludo's turn. Would you like to travel with me, Sir Yes, Didymus? I should love to travel with you, Ludo. Super duper. We are moving eight spaces. All right, you can meet up with Sarah. Yeah, let's go meet One, up with two, Sarah. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. Again, house rule, we're stopping on Sarah. Yeah. We are Normally house ruling Normally, we would that. go past her. And in our past experiences with this game, you spend a lot of time moving back and forth and back and yeah, forth just, and missing people. Yeah, it's silly. Do you want silly. to draw the card? Um, yes, let us do that. Yeah, I know the cameras aren't synced. <laughs> what happened? Jareth appears. Oh, man. Turn back, Sarah. Um, we can totally do this. Okay, what is it? <laughs> so, because it was your move, I'm going to go ahead and do this. Uh, give this card to another player who will read Jareth's part. You and you alone must answer correctly by heart. Oh. I you remind me one. of the babe. What babe? The babe with the power. What power? Power of voodoo. Voodoo? You do. Do what? Remind me of the babe. I saw my baby. <laughs> so success, we get to discard that. All right. That was easy. Yeah, that was an easy Jareth <laughs> encounter, man. Oh, man. Yeah, they I all be movie. like that. Yeah. All right. Uh, that was you? Uh, that was you. Oh, that was that me. That was Ludo. Okay. So Sarah, now all three of them are traveling together. If you would nice. like. Nice. Yeah, I and think. And they all move. Who's the slowest? Um, Sarah's a D10. I think it's still Ludo with a D. Yeah, lead, Ludo is slow. Yeah. Uh, they could now meet up with Hoggle, and the whole group is together. Uh, so that's a six. Okay. Um, yeah, Vex Zero. We um, unfortunately, we're in a loft at a game store. And the loft has these during bar Friday of fluorescent night magic. lights. During, during Friday Night Magic. Um, these bar lights, I Super would like reflective. eventually yeah. to get a screen to cover this and have better we lighting. just turn those lights off and get like proper studio yeah, lights. But it's just a matter of money. getting some more lights and that's just time. Eventually yeah. it'll happen. It will. Um, unfortunately at the moment, yeah, that does mean that the, the, the board is blurry. The camera we're using for the board, uh, yeah, it just it focuses about yeah, here. It doesn't focus nearly as well as we would like it yeah. to. We need to. There's, there's a lot of things we need. There to are improve. things we need to work on, tech-wise, but we're here. Yeah. 
playing a game. Um, all right, so you rolled a six, <laughs> and house rule, we're going to let them all stop on Hoggle? Yeah. A whole group is together. A whole bunch of them. Um, and then it will be Hoggle's turn. Well, no, something happens. Oh, yeah, something happens first. Uh, oh, my God. You shuffled this, right? I did shuffle this. I shuffled bad. Are, are we encountering really? Jareth Yeah, again? we are. Yeah, everybody's um, on this space. But we're testing wit <laughs> versus one blue die, and it's all four of us. Yeah. Well, roll the blue die. I guess that's him. Yeah. Roll under a 12. Yeah, that's probably a good idea. DG Deli says uh, get a small shade and put it atop the camera over the board. Mm. Um, yeah, what we need to do, there are a couple of things I want to do. I want to get a camera that can focus better closer to the yeah. board um, and get something better light so that we're not dependent on the and fluorescent bar light. So and there's not so much... I want to string Back a curtain across here. You can't see it on camera, but basically this is wide open this way to the rest of the store. Um, we have very high ceilings in the store, so we're up in a loft above the store. And there's a big standard tournament and a draft Yeah, going on. there's it's Friday Night loud. Magic. They're all playing Magic Gathering down there, which is cool, but noisy. So yeah, there are a couple of things that we want to do to improve the loft as a streaming space. Yeah. This is Jared. 15. Fifteen. All right, so we're, we're rolling everything together, right? Yes, we are. So we're, adding. we're doing wit. So Ludo has yep. a six for wit. Foggle has a uh, 12. Foggle has a 12. Sarah has an, a 10. And what does and Didymus have? Didymus is uh, eight. An eight. All right. Nice that they're all different. Yeah, well. That's <laughs> all right, so that's two. Seven. Five, six, seven. Oh, 10 and a 3. See, we would not have made that. Well, we could not have beaten a 15. We couldn't have beaten a 15. All. Yeah. So this house rule definitely is making the game much easier. It's, yeah. What happens if we succeed? So success, discard this card. Okay. Let's yeah. On the bottom. Um, if it was a fail, we wouldn't be able to rest or move, but have to test wit again. And it continues until the spell is broken by passing the test. Yeah. And that's why we decided to do this particular house rule of when we face Jareth, adding the dice instead of rolling with advantage. Yeah. Because even with the D12, he's still got, you know, almost half the die that he can roll where you was just can't Was that Sarah's turn? That was Sarah's turn, That was right? Sarah's turn, yes. All right, so, bong, we're on hour three. Yep. It's okay, we've all gotten together. That's yeah. better than the last time Now we we're moving a D6, but it doesn't really matter. Yeah, I, I'm... I'm going to go six. I'm pleased with it so far. Um, four, not five, all six. of... What we decided, we were originally going to just use it all the time. And then we decided, no, it's really only, like, useful, useful when you're playing against Jared. Yeah, which is he when, rolls a d20. Right, which is when the teamwork of the group really should kick in and make things easier, is when you're going up to face the big bad, right? Um, so I think it works to sort of keep it, keep you from sitting there round after round after round after round, um, which is where really... Yeah, I have the feeling we're going to win this easily because of that, Yeah, but that's okay. Um, it's more of a challenge with the actual rules, definitely. Yeah. So one, two, three, four, five, six, it doesn't really matter which direction we're going. No. So we'll all go over here. Yeah, we're all heading over there. Goodbye, Jareth. And something Later, new happens. Not an encounter with Jareth. It's the helping hands! We are helping. helping! Okay. So we have to choose up or down. <laughs> uh, uh, and then roll a blue die. I'm gonna choose up. <laughs> Whose turn is it? It's my turn. Why are you Okay, rolling? fine. You choose. Up or down? Uh, I choose down. She chose down! She chose down? <laughs> it's a four. Uh, down is... Up is odds. Down is even. Well, that's if, even. If I match the card... Oh, no. If, if you roll what you choose, leave this card on the space. Otherwise, leave this card on the space, and the characters on the space lose one willpower and move to the oubliette. So we did so we not won. fall into the oubliette. Because oh, I chose us. down and rolled even. Hey, Patrick. Oh, it's Patrick. Yes, welcome. We are playing Labyrinth. Yeah. Patrick is one of our our regular followers. So. Yeah. For Good to see you. 
All right, it is Sir Didymus's turn. Yeah, I, DG Dell, I spent several turns <laughs> waiting to try and beat beat Jareth uh, last time we played. It was kind of miserable. It was like, ah, come three, on, I want to, I want to move around the board. I want to encounter more things because the less you encounter, the less you're moving around the board, the more you're the longer like, it takes, the longer to hit it takes the you to hit City. the yeah. yeah. It just really bungs up the whole the whole game. Fairies. And it's actually very close to where the fairies are. The fairies no, are No, that's fairies. Oh, this not is fairies. fairies. This is back here. So the first time we played this game, yeah. we actually had a really weird situation where we were enc we encountered me. the fairies down here where they are in the labyrinth in the movie. So we're testing I encountered like the fairies up red. here. It really was. Things were happening very close to where they belonged on the board, which was really weird. Cause Two. It's random. I'm going to roll Ludo's brawn. Yeah, Ludo a, rolls a... Yeah. yeah. Is it's that a more three? than a two? Okay, well, we win. Okay, excellent. It stays on the space, but we don't lose willpower. Okay. So that's a space we probably don't want to land on because it could sap our will. Yeah. Uh, that, that would was be annoying. Didymus' turn. It's Ludo's turn. Cool. Um, so, so you guys want to travel together? Yeah, let's continue to travel together. Cool. For well, anybody who hasn't played the now. game before, the reason I did not want to fall into the Bog of Eternal Stench is if you lose there, what happens is you get, you get a, a stench token. smell bad token. Um, and you did, you though. I can bad. show them off again, Patrick. Yeah. The cards did know, DG. They were real. It was really weird. It was weird. Yeah, if we like were at the entrance we, we to the We encountered the ball we... over where the ball belongs. Yeah. And the hat over where the hat belongs. It was bizarre. Yeah, you probably can't see it because this camera doesn't focus very well and you can't see this board. So I'm but it has illustrations of many of the moments from the movie. Uh, so here's the, the man with his hat right here. And uh, the helping hands here are on top of the It's actually a good time to show the... them off because they're all on the same space, so it's easy oh, to yeah. put them back. There's the Ludo. This is the Fireys. Yeah. Hey, lady. Your head don't come off. Well, of course it doesn't. Yeah. I, I cannot say often enough how amazed I am by the painting job on these guys. Should enter them in the competition. If only, man. Very, very nice. Oh, and Jared. And Jared. This is his space. I'm, I'm just going to hold okay. it with my finger. I don't think you can make out the shininess of the cloak quite as well, but yeah, I got the um, globe in his hands, iridescent. I was really proud of the cheat I came up with for that. Um, I mixed a very bright silver paint with like a pink and a green and a yellow and a blue so that uh, it would and did little swoops of each one sort of scooped under each other so that it mimicked iridescence uh, and it came out quite nice and uh, I was saying the bog of eternal yeah. stench if you get a smell bad token it makes it harder to stay in a group because yeah. every time you move there's a chance that the smell will drive people away and you won't be working together anymore. So we do not want to fall into the bog. Um, it is Ludo's turn to move. I don't want to do that. I would be close to my mic and I don't want to do that. Uh, Ludo's turn to together. move. We're all moving together? Yeah. Cool. So it's Hoggle's Hoggle speed. speed. A six, yeah, though. Not bad. Sure. Empty space that way? Sure. All right. Snares. Hmm. What happens? So, um, thank you, Patrick. I, um, I had a lot of fun painting them. They <laughs> were a lot of fun. That's awesome. I would love to see Blood Rage figures done in yeah. pastels. <laughs> that would be fantastic. <laughs> Um, so this is the snares. Test wit versus one green die. 
Uh, success, leave the card on the space. Fail, leave it on the space, and characters can't rest or move, but must test wit again when it's their go. Yeah, okay. Yeah, but it's against a green. It's against a green, yeah. It's a three. Okay, I'll do um, Hoggle's wit. Yeah. Nope, That's Hoggle's a one. no help. Uh, is Ludo witty enough? No. Yeah, how about Bedivere? Or what do you Didymus? Think Bedivere? I, I don't know. Four. Didymus is smart. Did Didymus uh, escapes the snares. And what happens to the card if we succeed? Uh, it stays. Okay. It just stays there. So slowly the board fills up with cards. With dangers. Yes. Instead of dangers unknown, they become known dangers. Okay. All right. Now it's Sarah's turn. Sarah's turn. Uh, would you like to move together? I believe we shall. We're going to move two spaces. <laughs> I think we'll go this way. Okay. End up with the uh, hat. Yeah, let's not forget we have that hat. Yeah, that's super useful. Uh, it's a wit test one. If we end up against Jareth, it'll be a wit test, because oh, yeah. it usually is. Um, the Fiery's Camp is oh, what I got. Oh, which is up here. Uh, so we can choose to avoid them and test speed versus a purple. Well, our speed is going to be um, yeah. Hoggle's speed. Or face them and test brawn versus a purple and a black. Ah, so they get advantage. Um, success, you leave it on the space. Fail, and you lose two willpower and leave the card on the space. Let's do the brawn test. And, I think so. Uh, Ludo can use his card if we need to. Uh, yeah, we can. So it's a purple and a black. Yep, so this is their rolls. Yep. See, and, and this is what gave one. me the idea of instead of rolling with advantage, adding the dice, because sometimes they get to add the dice. Oh, do they add when they roll together? Yeah. Ouch. So that's a 16. Ouch. We can't beat a 16. No, I can't. What do we even do? See, that's what I mean fail. about the, the... I mean, I just lose. Yeah, we just lose. So I lose two willpower off of Ludo. Ludo needs to rest at some point. Okay, I think we may be resting soon. Because Hondo's down to one. Yeah, and Ludo's down to one. Um, uh, yeah, and that gets to group stay. has instructions. Ooh, well, let's find out. Yes, because if you rest as a group, you share stories or potion something. Potion Explosion is, the is so much fun. I love Potion Patrick, Explosion. I had so much fun I saw with the that. pictures that Patrick posted on the Discord. I need to if check you look, the Discord. Check out the Discord, anybody who's, who's watching. Um, Patrick posted pictures of his daughters playing Potion Explosion. It's awesome. DG, the Potion Explosion is so much fun. Um, it's basically a, a like ramp filled with actual marbles and you remove them to get them to like knock down into each other. Yeah, it's, be it's bejeweled. It's bejeweled sort of, but with In actual marbles. Form. It's a physical game, um, which is really funny. And you use them to collect the different color marbles to uh, make potions that have different effects. And then you can use the potions to get better moves in the game or like swap out marbles okay. and stuff. It's so, a lot of fun. Amanda, resting we'll with friends. We'll play that on stream at some point. Uh, <laughs> after resting. Yes. Uh, and it looks like it's regardless of whether you get a, a willpower or not. Yeah. The player who is resting may then exchange one of their willpower tokens. Like give one give of their willpower someone? tokens to any of the characters. Nice. Any of the characters in the space can get, then give one of their own willpower tokens to any of the other characters in the space. All right. So, for example, Sarah could rest and then give one of her willpower to Ludo. That sounds like a good idea. Let's do that. All right. So we're going to rest in the space? Yeah. All right. Sarah rests. Sarah rests. You roll a D... Uh, green die, the D6. And on a four or more, you gain a will. Nope. nope. But then you can give one of your will to anybody I'm else. I'm going to give it to Ludo. All right. You've got two on Hoggle. Now Ludo Hoggle's has turn. two. Yep, now it's Hoggle's turn. You want to give the, the turn token? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Just to keep track, because we're doing a lot of talking. Yeah. In general, the turn token seems superfluous, but when but you spend so much talking and working in a group, so you're all in the same space, yeah. it's handy to have that. And the hour moves forward. We're on hour four of 13. 
All right. I think Humble. we've encountered we've been encountering a fair number of cards. Humble is going to rest as well. I feel like we've been going through the deck a little faster. Yeah. Four. So Humble four. gets one, and then if we would like, we could redistribute. Do I you think we're give good. One more to Ludo, so we all have three. Yeah. Sure. All right. Everybody has three willpower right now. Yep. Then it's Sir Didymus's turn. Shall we move? I think we should move. Okay, so roll a d6. I haven't played Ghost Fighting Treasure Hunters, no, that sounds but that fascinating. sounds hilarious. Two. It's a two. We don't want to go back to the snares, so no, we're we going don't. this way, right? Yep, ahead we go. Oh, it's cool. co-op. I love co-op games. Um, I am going to be doing a family game night later in the month at my workplace. I am a children's librarian. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to be playing some games. I'll have to see if I can get a hold of that one. Ooh. Yeah, we... Amanda is a big fan of... Uh, what is the monster thing with Go Back Into the Closet? It's a little younger aimed. Monster Chase. Monster Chase. And it's aimed at probably four to six, that sort of range. Yeah, and it, like yeah. you could play it with like a three-year-old. It's like a memory game. But when you win, you get to throw the monster back in You're the welcome. closet. Shifted the dice tray a little. Sure, sure. Starting, well, we've been throwing the dice, dice at it, so it it's around. been yeah. slowly, it's been walking. All right, something has to happen. Oh, yeah, something has to happen. This Goblin Knight. This is something. We can uh -oh. choose to face him, test brawn against a purple. Okay. Or avoid him to speed versus a yellow. Well, we know our speed is no, no good. Let's do the brawn yeah. test. Yeah, let's do the against the purple. Okay. Um, so that's against Ludo's brawn. So that's that's cool. This is his roll. Seven. Ooh, that's a tough one. But yeah. Oh, you roll. It's Ludo's. Mm -hmm. a three. No, uh, that's a three. Uh, well, we're all doing it together, so uh, Sir Didymus is also a purple. Oh, cool. So we could roll a seven or an eight. That's a yes. nine. So, yeah, we win. Fantastic. Um, so discard the card. Okay. On the bottom it goes. That was Sir Didymus. So yep. now it is Ludo's turn. All right. Uh, Ludo's going to all move together. Ghost, Ghost Love, Love Candy. Candy. I'm not familiar with that one either. Actually, I think I've heard of it. It's a one. Oh, okay. We're moving one. Go that way. Sure. Um. Goblins. Test brawn against one green and one red. Green and red. Okay. Yep. Success. Discard it. Fail. Lose a willpower and leave this card on the space. Okay. They have a nine. nine. What are we testing? Brawn? Uh, brawn. Okay. Ludo, can you do it? Yeah. Yo, easily. That was a 12. Go Ludo. <laughs> uh, another great, uh, it's not specifically aimed at children, but another great co-op game you can play with children is Castle Panic. Mm, yes, uh, definitely. Because that's a fun co-op game where, you know, you've got a castle in the center that you're defending against monsters that attack you. Yeah. Highly recommended. And a bunch of variations on it as well, like Star Trek Panic. Yeah. All right. All right. That was, that was Ludo. Ludo's turn. Now it's Sarah's Sarah. turn. Sarah would also like to move with all of her friends. Yes. Six. Six. Well, that's quite fast. One, two, three, four, five, six. Or one, two, three, four, five, six. Well, we don't want to go to the four guards. Nope. We'll go right past Jareth. Yep. Sneak, sneak, sneak right past her. I was leading her back to the start of the labyrinth. <laughs> A little deception on my part. <laughs> All right, uh, something happens. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Tabletop date for Omo. Oh, Panic. yeah, nice. nice. So it keeps, it keeps changing. changing. What happens? All right, discard this card. And if there are any other cards on the board, move the card that is on the nearest space to this space. And follow the instructions on that card. That would be that. So one the there. helping hands. Yeah, the helping hands. Move to us, and yeah. we have to roll. Uh, you have to choose up or down. Yep. And then roll a d20. Up is odds. Down okay. is evens. I'll choose down. Eighteen. That's even. Yes. We're good. 
All right. And we're on Tower 5. You can see why this game is such a challenge. Yeah. You, you have to go through this deck. You have to you keep have to working your that way deck. through the deck. Because, uh, and having it be in the bottom third... Can I have like, the D6? Come on, really? Yeah, the, the fact that the... It's three. a three. Uh, one, two, three. One, two, three. It doesn't really matter. Yeah. I'll go this way. Whoops. I'm trying there not to bump no. the figures against each other because although you did seal them, I I'm sealed them. Yeah. They're okay. And I the two knockers. Figures. Test wits versus one purple die. Success. Leave it here. Fail. Lose one willpower and leave it here. No good. Can't hear you. Yeah. So. That stays here. Wit versus one purple. Oh, so okay. roll a purple. Three. Three. We can we can outwit that. Yeah, we definitely can. Sarah's got a. What is? Uh, Sarah's a purple. Well, just roll Sarah first. Sure. Uh, it's a ten. That's more than three. It's a zero. You outwitted them, Sarah. Yep. No good. Can't hear you. Yeah. All right. Sir Didymus. It's Sir Didymus's turn. And we're continuing to travel with the green die. Yes. All traveling together. One. We'll just move one. Oh, five. <laughs> <laughs> That's an obscure ref. It is an obscure ref. And it is the gloomy, scary forest. Each character on this sp space tests wit versus one purple. You cannot test as a group. Ooh. Success, leave the card here. Fail. Each character that fails loses a willpower and is moved to the bog. Wow, that's harsh. Wow, that's harsh. This is horrible. That, that's a, a difficult, difficult card. All right. We can't work as a team. So we're doing wit against purple? One purple. So roll the purple first. That's a three. All right, that at least is manageable. Yep. All right, so I'll do Hoggle's Wit first. Yep. Come on, more than three. Eight. Eight is okay, more so. than three. Hoggle wins. All right. Uh, do Didymus. Didymus. Yep, Didymus. Three. Seven. Okay. So Sarah. One. Sarah failed. Uh, you can willpower it. Yeah, I'm gonna. Oh, uh, is this a Wit check? Uh... Yes, it is. Okay. Do I can roll an extra it? blue. Mm. Or add a blue to it? Do you want to save that for something more deadly? You can just use a willpower. Yeah, I'm just going to use a willpower. Okay, reroll. Eight. That passes. All right, and uh, Ludo. Ludo, not terribly witty. But he Three. passes. He passes. Oh, we made it. That was a challenge. I was worried that we were going to split up and somebody was going to oh, get stinky. Oh, man, Patrick, I love Dixit. I love Dixit so much. Yeah, Dixit is awesome. Dixit is one of my favorite games. Um, I also love all the Fluxin. All the Flux games. Well, not all. Super, not we all, have drunk all Flux in, in the store. in general, I love Flux. Just I love Flux as yeah. a, a concept. Um, I think it's I had mentioned I met... Um, Kristen Looney. Yeah. At, uh, so PAX cool. East I last wasn't year. there for that. She was very cool. I missed that. She's a total hippie. I love her. Uh, <laughs> she's exactly what you would expect. <laughs> All right, so. I say uh, that Ludo, with, with nothing but respect. <clears throat> she was awesome. We're traveling together. Yes. Welcome back, DG. One. Yeah, all right, well, <laughs> we're, let's we're go not to the going to the space, knockers. Yeah. yeah. Here we are. Oh. Entrance to the Goblin City! We found it! We have found it! Alright, I'm going to move this out of the way. We're still on yeah. turn five. But now, that card goes here. And um, so, the way this works is that the Entrance to the Goblin City is a card that you draw from the Encounter deck. But once you've drawn it, that space that you were on becomes the entrance. Yep. So you can move from that space to this space here on the board. And that's the first space in the Goblin City. So we could have drawn it up here and it still would have led us to this space next. It sort of becomes an instant portal. So now um, we're gonna populate the city. Place Jareth in his castle. Yep. 
and all guard stand-ups yep. in the city. That's Jarrett. Where'd the gargantuan go? Uh, I have it up here. Okay. So obviously you guys can't see these because you're looking at it top down. Yeah. But this is huge. this is the first of the huge, uh, the ones we're gonna encounter. Is the uh, the gargantuan. If I we would, choose to go here, into can you the put city. that under us? Do you want to rest a bit before we go in? I think we probably should. This Just to we, I mean we've got we've we've, we've got time. We whipped through. God, I love Dixit. Yeah, it's uh, it's Mysterium's so also awesome. I haven't played it, but everything I've heard and seen for Mysterium sounds awesome. We should play that on stream. We should totally do it. It's, we'll do it, that. Yeah, it's a we'll challenge. We'll play Mysterium. Uh, we'd um, have to. The trick with Mysterium would be I would want to show the chat what the mystery is. So mm. we'd have to have the chat oriented so you can see behind the board and I see think we the can answer. Do that. I think we can set up the cameras. And then we just have to have that. honor system. Chat, don't tell people what the answer is. <laughs> all right. All right, so we we're now have the, the entrance to the now. Goblin City. But we're not going to dive straight in there. Sarah, no. it's your turn. Sarah's going to rest. Okay. Sarah is severely lacking Roll in willpower. She's, she's feeling pretty down in the dumps. That's a three. Uh, that's nothing. Okay. No. Uh, and now it's Hoggle's does turn. Does Hoggle want to rest? Yeah, I think we're all going to rest a little bit. We're on to turn six, Do so we've roll got time. Hoggles. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. No. Uh, did I miss Didymus. one roll? Rest. What the? Man. All right, the, the game doesn't rest. want us to do this. No. We're going to waste an entire hour we resting just, and like, getting nothing. We just, like, failed as a group. Yeah, that was awful. We're just feeling really demoralized. That's the problem. I guess. Peaches for all. Sarah's going to rest again. She's, okay. I mean, we've got... That's a six. So Sarah right. gets a willpower. Sarah back. gets a willpower. That's good. All right, we're all at three. Yeah. And and we're moving to turn seven. We've got I think plenty of time, but I feel like we should start encountering goblins. I think we should, yeah. All right, so... To move into the Goblin City, we don't have to roll, I don't believe. No, I don't think so. Uh, yeah, because we're automatically going to go to the entrance to the Goblin City. So now we're facing off against the first Goblin. And they have handy reminder cards that tell you what each Goblin does. So we're going to do battle with Humongous. Humongous! Uh, test Brawn versus One Blue. Success, remove the humongous stand up, fail, lose a willpower, remain here, oh no, and roll again DG, next that's go. That's horrible. What happened? He says, I know one person locally that owns Mysterium, but he hasn't been able to play it because this box was missing an entire deck of cards. You should contact the manufacturer. They he usually tried. Do that. They usually fix that. He sort got of the thing. runaround for a week and then was told there was nothing they could do. Wow. That that's harsh. stinks. Yeah, that's not That is that's a super bummer. Not happy. Yeah. Uh, not you cool, whoever roll makes one Mysterium. Blue for Humongous? Yeah, let's roll a blue for Humongous. Six. Six is doable. Six is manageable, We're doing a yeah. brawn test. Uh, so I'll roll Hoggle's brawn. What's Hoggle's brawn? Oh, D8. A seven. We win. Hoggle jumps down on his head and <sighs> defeats him. Yep. That actually that is, is such a canon, brawn. exactly what happens so in the movie. Yeah, it is. All right, now All right. it is Sir Didymus's turn. Yep. And we can go to encounter the next one. We're going to do this. This is actually... We are going to do this. Because we house ruled things. I think it's um, the house faster. rule to... Maybe with the house rule of adding the dice when we encounter Jareth um, and being able to meet up by landing, like stopping at each other, we don't need to worry so much about burying... So this is the next guy. ...the other card. If you can see it, I don't know how bad the glare is. That's such a good idea, Patrick. Adding music to, like, add to its yeah, mysteriums. That is yeah. an excellent idea. We'd have to get public domain music. Because we are streaming. They make, like, public domain, like, Halloween haunted house stuff, and that's yeah, what he's saying. we could do so, that. I like the idea of using music to enhance the mood of a game. Oh, definitely. I would love, if we could have, I would have loved to play the Labyrinth soundtrack while we were playing this. 
but yeah, but, then, yeah then our video would be silent later on <laughs> it really yeah youtube would jump right on us yeah then twitch would just silence the Who entire thing that? it was originally i mean the muppets are disney now yeah. henson company is disney it, disney's not lo known for being litigious no, at all No, disney doesn't mind if you anyways yeah. goblin infantry are the next thing that we're yep. battling so we're testing brawn versus one red, one green, and one yellow. Wow. Yeah. So why don't we roll their thing first and So it's what? A red, what, a green, a and a red, yellow? A red, a green, and a yellow. So that's five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten. We could beat a ten brawn. Yeah. I think it's pretty doable. Ludo's got a Ludo's twelve first? brawn, so that's an eight. Nope. Uh, do you want to burn Ludo's a special ability I'm to gonna add a d20 to it? Oh, we never used the The hat, hat. yeah, I know. Alright, yeah, Ludo's going to burn his, uh, I'm going to tap his ability and roll a d20. Is it added to? I think it's added to. It says roll an extra blue die for a failed brawn test. Okay. Anyways, what are we still trying to beat, a 10? Yeah. Okay. It's an 11. 11. They are defeated. Yeah. Oh, that's a bummer. Yeah, what? if you're if you're playing in someone else's space, yeah, you can't control the music. Ludo. Extra is added to. Well, great. I would have won anyway, but that's good to yeah. know. <laughs> so we're gonna encounter these guys next. Sweet. These are actually some of my favorite. Practical puppets. Oh, I love them. From They're the, so cool. The show, or from the movie, um, it's the Goblin Infantry. Yep. The Goblin Cavalry. It's that gag where the head of the thing they're riding is one hand. Yeah. Yeah. I, I just love that. It's so well done. A fun practical thing that they could do in camera. Awesome. There was something up earlier that, like, uh, on I think Twitter, saying you know, in ten years, cruddy CGI is going to look even worse. But puppets are always going to look like cool puppets. It's true. Yeah, that's why the Star Wars movies have held up so well. Yeah, all the as practical effects the prequel hold up really nicely. Movies, anyways. Yeah. Uh, anyway. Goblin cavalry test: brawn versus a green, yellow, and purple. These do get tough. Yep. So a green, a yellow, a purple. Oh, they roll bad. Four, five, six, seven. Seven. We can beat a seven. Should I roll Ludos? Sure. Seven. Oh, we win. Yay! Okay. Um, are we counting up hours? How many have we hit? Three? It's not an no. hour for each encounter, is it? But it's, it's a round, so we've done three, so if we hit this one, yeah, wouldn't so it go up one? Yeah, so it's Sarah's turn. Okay. Yeah. So now we're going to go to that yep. one. And this is the Goblin Artillery. So we're going to test Brawn versus a yellow, a purple, and a black. So they get progressively harder and harder. Yeah. It's goblin Artillery. Oh, I'll show. Yep. I hit something. Yes? yes. No. no? Hey, I fired you. So that's a seven. Oh, I see. Oh, a that's a 17. 17. 21. 21. I, there's no way we can beat it. No. So what happens when we lose? Is it brawn versus? Yeah, it is. Then it stays there and we, we lose, all a lose a willpower. Or she loses a willpower. She loses a willpower. Okay, and we remain fine. here and roll again yeah. next turn. Okay. So, so it goes up an hour. Bong. Yep. We've got four hours and plenty of willpower. I, there's no way we're not winning this. <laughs> but the game Zebo. We'll That's awesome, yeah. Patrick. All right. This is Hoggle. Yeah, Doing if you're in Florida, battle. man, Ugh. that's uh, you that's would definitely not want to do it in Florida. 14, <laughs> you want to be in the air conditioning, I would assume. Uh, 15. Uh, no. Right, right? Brawn? Not unless we are, we're adding. Yeah. Do you, does... Um, Didymus, what's his brawn? Um, his brawn is a 10. And what's his special ability? Is it um, brawn? Yes. All but right. We're on Hoggle right now. 
But I'm just but saying. Yeah. No, that's a good point. So we lose this one. Hoggle loses a willpower. Yep. We stay where we are. Now it's Didymus's turn. You want to roll them again? And if we lose this, we can burn his thing to do brawn. Yep. 14. 19. I guess it's all brawn. Sorry, Hoggle could have used it for an extra blue die. Yeah, Sarah's is a wit test, oh. but I think the others are brawn. Yeah, Hoggle's is brawn. Didymus is brawn. And Ludo's is definitely brawn. Huh. Well, I guess that helps yeah. for beating the Goblin City. What's their it total? Does. Uh, 19. 19, okay. So, roll Ludo's. Ludo's brawn? Yeah. It's a three. Three. All right. I'm gonna, I'm gonna roll a d10. Five. Five. Better. Uh, you want to try Sarah's? Yeah, she only has a d6. Uh, she did roll better. It's a five. It's also a five. And Hoggle. Eight. Eight. Let's start with that as the base. Yep. And then we'll burn Sir Didymus's for an extra you blue. Roll that? Sure. What are we trying to beat? An nineteen. Eight, a nineteen. So I need it. An eleven. Or eleven. Better. Eighteen. Yeah. Sweet. Down it goes. All right. So the Goblin King's maze te test wit versus one blue this would die. Be uh, Ludo's turn? Yes. Okay. Uh, success, Sarah can recite the spell. Fail, move the goblin clock forward by one hour and try again. Ooh, so things accelerate now. Yeah. We never made it this far. I think we only made it to the second Goblin City test. So here we are in the maze. All right. So what are we rolling against? Uh, we are rolling against blue, testing wit against blue. Okay. It's a nine. A nine. Uh, well, let me roll Hoggle's wit and see if he can outwit that. It's a d12. No. One is not more than nine. No. Uh, Sarah rolls a d10, so. Okay. It's an eight. Not more than a nine. Yeah, but she has wit. Yeah. As her special ability, so I'm gonna so burn that. So that automatically beats a nine, right? Yep, eighteen on that. So now I can recite the spell. Can you do it from memory? Yeah, I can. Okay. Give me the child. You, do you want to look at it oh, to oh, make sure. sure I'm doing it right? Um, wait. I just looked the pressure, at it. The pressure. The pressure. Yeah. Um. Through dangers untold and hardships unnumbered, I have fought my way here to the Goblin City to take back the child that you have stolen. For my will is as strong as yours, and my kingdom as great. You have no power over me. Yes. Yeah. Actually, you skipped a bit. Did I skip a line? Yeah. It's uh, in the I middle, right? I fought my way here to the castle beyond oh, the, the Goblin castle City. castle beyond the Goblin City. To take back the child that you have taken from me. But I think... I think in the spirit of playing this it. on easy mode, yeah. <laughs> I think we win. That was awesome. And that I, was fun. I think it makes me want to watch the movie. I think adding. <laughs> Don't want to go home you. and watch Labyrinth. Thank, thank you. Um, I I think definitely adding the dice together when you face Jareth worked well. Yeah, I think we could like do one of the two house rules. Yeah. The, Stopping on somebody instead of passing by them sped the game up so much. Significantly. So much. That definitely helped us a lot. Thank you, Patrick. Um, I also, I think if we speed it up by being able to land on each other, yeah. we don't need to worry about burying the card hmm. in the deck because hmm. we've already sped it up. Because we ended up with like a chunk of hours left, and yeah, yeah, you could end up burning hours right at the end. Yeah. But I think we don't need to. We can still bury the card in the bottom third, as opposed to like a little ways up. Shall we reiterate our advice to anybody who's playing the game straight with the core rules? Yeah, let's the, do that. The secret tech, all right, to winning this game if you're playing by yourself. Yes, yeah, our our pro tip. Our plan. 
there are multiple ways in this deck to get thrown into the oubliette. Or you so, could just land on it. Or you could just land on it. So the oubliette is a place where you don't move automatically, you have to rest. It is an excellent place to meet up with other companions. So if you're finding that you just can't roll to land exactly on somebody, which is what you have to do if you're playing the game yeah. uh, by its, its rules We kept as doing written. that, oh, missed you by one yeah. sort of deal. And really, having the team together is 100% key. You yeah. have to have the team together to roll with advantage to beat some of the tests. Like, getting through the Goblin City, you couldn't do that by yourself. You need everybody with you. No. So, and yeah. yeah, saving your special abilities to use in the Goblin City. Definitely, though we should have burned that hat I know, I forgot on. about we, for the hat. we kept forgetting that we had the hat. I do think that using, so if you missed at the beginning, um, they, there is a, um, a weakness for each character where instead of playing with their normal, like for Ludo, instead of being able to use the D12 for the brawn, you use the D8 or the D10 for the brawn. So you're yeah. playing with the die like two lower than you would normally until you've won a check against that. And I think that could work. Um, Patrick, it plays four people, up to four people, two to four. Uh, Andy and I played tonight as two people, but we played all four characters. Yeah. So yeah, uh, you play with either, like you start with Sarah and Hoggle, and then you add Ludo, and then you add Didymus. We played with all four, so we could see you know, what a full game with all four characters would play like, so yeah. Here, have some but willpower, Andy. I, I will take all the willpower you can give me. Thank you. Oh, that's a good idea, uh, having the fifth person manage the deck. Um, yeah. If you have more people. That's a really good idea, because there's a lot of, like, if you can be... Can I have Ludo's special cards oh. and Sarah's special cards? Yes. If you're, like, if you have someone who's playing basically as the bad guys and rolling for, like, all the goblins yeah. and stuff, that's a really good idea. Yeah. You don't have to play all four, Patrick. Uh, you can play... Uh, the game has instructions for what to do with two players. You play as Sarah and Hoggle. Yeah. And then if you have three players, you play as, I believe, Sarah, Hoggle, and Ludo. And four players, Sarah, Hoggle, Ludo. Yeah, here we are. One, two, or three players. Um, if you don't have four players, the game remains the same, except some players will control more than one character. So you can still oh. play with all four. Okay. Three players, one randomly determined player controls both Hoggle and Didymus. It two would be players, really hard. one person controls Hoggle and Didymus, the other Sarah and Ludo, which is what we did. That's what we did, yeah. Uh, or you can play everybody for a yeah. single player game. Ooh, to play it against the game itself. Yeah. That's a cool idea. Yeah, you could totally play it solitaire. So yeah, um, but you don't have to play four players. We didn't. Yeah. So yeah, I like that. If you're a fan of... I mean, if you want to play it super hard mode, play with weaknesses and have just Sarah and Hoggle play the game. Oh boy, that would that's be super hard practically mode. impossible because Ludo's You'd, brawn gets you through so much. You would really have to like hardcore do some house rules for how to add the dice instead of rolling with advantage you'd have to be adding things yeah just because otherwise there's no way you could win a lot of those dice rolls like you could you literally could not so i mean i think the game is designed with the intention that you're going to lose most you, of you the can't time. win all the time it can't, can't rain all the time yeah that's a different 80s or 90s movie we're married. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we share our brains sometimes. We're coming up this week on our 14th anniversary. Uh, that is yeah. this Tuesday. We're going to go see the Dark Tower for our anniversary. Yeah. That's going to be awesome. Very excited about that. Um, but yeah, I definitely four players was a lot of fun. The first time we played this, we played this with my friend uh, Sarah and our friend Jen. And it was a lot of fun with four players, especially four players who really know the movie and oh, are yeah. like total nerds you get about all it the and willing to quote and it. You make Thank all you, the references. DG. Yeah, we, we actually celebrated our 10th anniversary in this store. Yep. We were like, well, we don't really have anything else to do and it's a Friday night. 
let's go play Magic for our 10th anniversary. We ended up playing uh, Cards Against Humanity. We did. We spent yeah. most of the evening playing Cards Against Humanity, which was a lot of fun. We should do... Like you so, do. This fall, and I'm going to mention this because we do have some people watching who are fairly new to our stream. Um, this fall in, what, October? Yeah. Um, we are going to be doing something for the Extra Life uh, game day. Yep. We and do have a link in the yep. links below this. So if you check down there, you can donate to Extra Life yes. now. Um, um, we do a 24-hour uh, gaming marathon. Thank you, Patrick. Oh, congratulations. 19 years. Wow. That is super cool. Wow. Um, yes, the new Attack on Titan game is in the store. We had one copy left when we started the stream. I don't know if it's still there. <laughs> he says he pre-ordered it months ago online. So okay. Um, yeah. Yeah, that game for something like that. Really um, wild. But the twenty-four hour game gaming marathon, we're gonna try and stream a fair chunk of it. Uh, and we'll try and break out in, in like the middle of the night. We'll try and break. It's out actually some, like, another twenty-five hour marathon. <gasps> That's right. Because That's it runs right. from noon to noon, and it's over daylight savings time. It's daylight savings time, twenty-four hours. Twenty-five hours. <laughs> That's so be tired. Fun. So much. Fun. Um, um, but yeah, if you so go we'll to our YouTube channeling, some people might end up watching this on YouTube because yeah. we're going to archive it there. Yeah. If, if you're you go to our YouTube, YouTube channel. Uh, th and again, there's a link. <laughs> you can see some of the videos. There are uh, videos from the past um, <laughs> Extra Life, and there's one in particular when I was making waffles at 2 or 3 in the morning. I am so tired. I am so Andy tired Andy makes really good waffles. Video. And then Amanda wanders into frame wearing a sleeping bag. I, like I get three minutes into that video. when I'm overtired. Oh. So I had brought a down <laughs> sleeping bag to the store to put on and uh, I hopped myself up the stairs to the loft and then waved at the camera and disappeared again. It was really, I don't really know if tired. I knew you had done that. Um, any Anyone watching this on YouTube, DG Dell says hello. He's one of the people in our chat, which of course if you're watching it on YouTube you won't yeah, see. Yeah, the chat doesn't show um, up on YouTube. We had a really great chat tonight. I'm really excited that we had some folks well, talking I to mean, me. Well, I mean, this was the game Yay. that won the poll. Yeah. So this is the game people wanted to see. Um, so we'll like put up another poll or we'll play one well, of the ones that got second place. Well, next week actually is a special event. I'm going to be away next... It's possible I will be away next week. Um, I am on vacation next week and I'm possibly going away with my mom. Um, but if I'm around, I'll play with you guys. If okay. not, uh, Andy, Derek, and Caden... Uh, Derek being the owner of the store and Caden being his, is his son, son. Yep. are hopefully going to be playing Dungeon. Which is a fun sort of semi-role-playing yeah. adventure game. I asked Caden, what's his favorite board game? And he, <laughs> he said, said Dungeon. Dungeon. Yeah. That's awesome. And it's so accessible. It's such a simple, fun, and inexpensive game. Yeah. I mean, I love games that come in at that $20 yeah. price point. That is like the magic point. Anybody, yeah, it's so good. Yeah. Like King Domino, we have to play King Domino on the stream. We do, yeah. Um, but that is, again, one of those magic price point games. Yeah, it's perfect. But yes, um, next week, 7.30 p.m. on Friday, and I'll, I'll set up a link in Twitch so you can get set reminders for yourself. Yeah. Uh, we're going to play Dungeon on the stream, and <laughs> that should be so much fun. And I'm looking forward to playing with Caden. I've um, never actually played it, so yeah. Caden's going to have to teach me how to play. And for anyone joining us for the first time, um, we played last week, we played Plank, and the video yep. for that should be on the in our Twitch videos It's right still now. in the Twitch videos. It's not up on YouTube yeah, yet because I want to do a yet. bit of editing for it. But that was a lot of fun. And yeah. not just because I won. <laughs> <laughs> But it was a lot of fun. I was super tired, so I was sort of out of it. But it was a really uh, fun game. Yeah, that Clank game was definitely cool. That um, was wild. It, it was one of those games of Clank. If you're not familiar with Clank, it's a deck building game with, with a, a board dungeon. Game. With you a board game. You use the deck to move around yeah. the board. It's an awesome it's concept, cool. and it's really well executed. Yeah. Um, but that particular game, nobody got out alive. We didn't nobody play with the companion app. Out. We, we, we no. played with the base game. Yeah. And yeah, I almost made it out alive. I was so close. Yeah, you were two spaces away from close. getting out alive. Yeah. 
I was close to getting out alive Real as well close. if I had drawn into the teleport spell that I had in my deck. Yeah. But I didn't but get I it. But I still won because I didn't move much. I didn't build my deck with a lot of movement. Yeah. So. And I thought, man, I'm not being able to move around the board much. Except then I grabbed a cheap treasure and yeah, got out. The, and I had been fighting goblins the, the entire time, so I had tons of gold. <laughs> yeah, that was definitely. That's, once that video goes up, on we'll YouTube, have to look at the companion app. DG Dell says the companion app says uh, is in addition to making it five players, also makes it more fun. I'm That's up awesome. for that. Yeah. Uh, there's I, also an expansion cool that has that. a new board that has the underwater. Yeah, expansion, the underwater, the sunken treasures. Uh, which I don't know. Cool. So we, so we want to take a look yet. at that. There are a ton of demo games downstairs that I would love to crack open and play on stream. So we have plenty of material. Yeah, we're going to um, put a poll up. Uh, it will be posted to Battlegrounds Facebook page. Yep. Uh, it will be posted to the Discord. Again, link down below. Yeah, Check out our a Discord. Idea, uh, we'll have a poll linked there, and I'll put that poll up probably tomorrow. Renegade and Games run it Companion for app. a little also more than a week. And Flatline. That sounds like a really good idea. What? Um, so DG Dell says it's the Renegade Games Companion app, and okay. it's also used for Fuse and Flatline. Okay. Which awesome. sounds awesome. Um, and Patrick suggests for Dungeon replacing the cardboard standees uh, that fall Because you won't over, be able to see them very well, anyways. Um, with like actual minis. Well, Derek's Which got enough of those. Derek definitely has plenty of those. Yeah. So I think that can be That's done. That's an excellent suggestion. Yeah. 100%. Hey, it's Homebrew Dwarf. <laughs> hey, joining us at the very <laughs> end. <laughs> Hello. <Hi Josh. laughs> um, yeah, so we're... So. We had fun tonight. We did. We had fun tonight. Yeah. <laughs> that, was, that was a good time. Labyrinth was really fun. I'm really excited um, that... I was able to get the the figures painted. When I have the really awesome three inch versions, we'll play it again. Sure. <laughs> Won't be able to You're fit them downstairs. all. You're not downstairs. What? You're home now. Did you did you lose that quickly? What were you playing standard? Were or you, were you here playing? earlier? Didn't I see your face? He was like, definitely here. Right there. <laughs> oh, cause box tournament. Yeah, oh yeah. Right. Well, Dave. Thanks for joining Thank us. Thank you for popping in at the, uh, end at of the, the very end. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so just quick explanation. Uh, last Friday of the month is always a standard magic tournament for a booster box. So it's a little more competitive. It's a little more competitive and uh, twice as expensive. <laughs> Yeah, we'll, we'll be here, Dave, tomorrow morning. We will be around. Oh, yeah. Pokemon. I'll be, I'll be here. Pokemon, Pokemon time. It's going to yep. be a time. Aha, uh -huh, for pre-release with his judge hat on. Nice. Yeah, it's going to be... Exciting. It's going to be good. I fully anticipate that we're going to fill the pre-release because we did oh, not yeah. get enough packs. Yeah. And I've had people calling, so, yeah. Well, All right. well thank you, everybody, for joining us. I think we're going to sign us. off. That was super and fun. And, yeah. We Next will. Friday, we're going to have Dungeon. Yeah. And I'll put a poll up to determine what we'll do the Friday after that, which will be uh, Near and Far, yep. uh, King Domino, uh, Dice Forge. Dice, Dice Forge. I really want to play Dice Forge. Um, there was something else that we were thinking should be on the short list. Anyways, we'll have um, that poll up tomorrow. DG Dell wants to know if we heard anything about the game Zombie World Order. I'm not familiar with it. I am no. not familiar with it. Zombie World Order. Um, DG Dell, we have a Discord. Uh, yeah. If you're on Discord, um, we're is it just Battleground Games? What's well, you have to you have to. There's use a link the, down at yeah, the bottom. Use the yeah. link that's in use the, the link chat, underneath the, the link that's video right down here. There. Um, there's a invitation to the Battleground Discord. Yeah. And you can just click that invitation. It never expires. Anybody's and welcome. We have a whole board game channel on there. If you don't have a Discord account, it's super easy to make and it's a great little way to chat with people about games and we have one for the store. So, good night, Patrick. Thank yeah, you for joining everybody. us. It was awesome. We're going to sign off um, and put things and away. And yeah, we'll see if we can find someone who knows it. Uh, it's a trading card game, but he doesn't know anyone that plays it. Trying Aww. to find out if it's worth getting into. Yeah. Definitely pop into our Discord and we'll see if we've got anyone around who knows it. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good suggestion. Yeah, I think that's a good place to, to hit up for it. Um, yeah. We'll see what we can dig up. All right. All right. Awesome. Night, Thank everybody. you so much for joining us. Thanks for joining us.